so much of uh, building collapse and no other person more qualified than engineer Kayode uh, Fuwudi to discuss this particular topic with us. You're welcome, engineer Kayode. Yeah, good morning, Steven. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> I like your smile. Yeah, I even uh, like his spectacle. Oh, oh right. <laughs> Intelligent people oh. wear spectacles. Oh, really? You're I, going I, to turn it around <laughs> to that, sincerely speaking? I think I love his too. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> what can we say about her? Okay, we love our star hearings. You know, it ain't collapsing from my ears, anyway. <laughs> Okay, uh, oh, please, Mr. Kayode. <laughs> I, I, I think I, th I think you you are better of being a building regulator. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> you know, on that on that note, that is a cue. Yes. You know, we're looking at some of the issues uh, of recent. We've had too many building collapse, yeah. where we've actually had cases where people have died, lost their lives in most of these misfortunes. Uh, what exactly is the status of this particular case as it is with building integrity vis-a-vis -vis the rate of building collapse in Nigeria? Yeah, yes, it's quite unfortunate. Um, we all know that building um, construction is, uh, is a high-risk um, sector that needs to be adequately managed both by the building owners and um, the regulators. And unfortunately, we've not been able to um, manage that effectively as of today in Nigeria. And I think well, one of the major problems has to do with um, the legislation, the adequate application of the legislation in Nigeria. At the moment, although we have the building regulations, but we don't have a sustainable and robust um, construction-specific health and safety legislation that is tailored towards managing building construction. We, for us to move from where we are to where we want to be, then we need to have a more sustainable health and safety legislation a lot to the construction industry that can support the existing legislation we have. Okay, so so for me, is there a particular? I know we we had a whole lot to talk about earlier before the show yeah. itself, and then I I made mention of a particular situation whereby I was privileged to be in a particular country, not in Nigeria actually, okay. where um, uh, before you could uh, before someone came in like a particular body okay. uh, from an organization walked into a building to check the building you understand yeah. whether it is fit for people after the whole construction and okay. everything yeah. to check the building whether it is fit for people to come in to live in that particular building so talking about referring to that now bringing that back to Nigeria yeah. do we have such bodies in Nigeria whereby after a building is being constructed you know a particular body is being deployed there to check whether it is fit for um, people to live in, you, un you understand, in that particular building. Is there such bodies here? Yes. Uh, at the moment, the, the Lagos State Building um, Control Regulatory Agency, uh, at the moment, are supposed to be doing that. If you look at um, one of their duties, include inspection and also withdrawal of um, any distressed building, and at the completion of a building, they also have a duty to also check to, to actually verify and endorse that the building is also fit for purpose, for people to live in. But unfortunately, most of the buildings that are being constructed uh, as of today in Nigeria, they do not have direct contact with um, the regulators. If you go, let's look at the, um, in the UK, why would the regulator know that a building has been erected somewhere in Shomolu? Mm. It is because if they have a regulation called the Construction Design and Management Regulation 2007, although it was um, revised in 2015, it says that if you have, if you if you're a client and you want to build a structure, if it takes, if the building construction is going to take over 30 days, or is you're going to involve more than 500 persons, then you need to notify the regulators. There's a form on their website that you just need to fill in the address of of the buildings. Um, the, the number of days the construction work is going to take. So right from day one, they already know that a building is being constructed somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the regulation also clearly goes further to say, if you are the client, these are your duties. It places this on both the client, the designer, the contractors, and even employees that are going to be used on the project. So what does that mean? It tells you that they, are, they have a good understanding of the project, right from the design to completion. Okay, So in such cases, that is why once a project is, is involved, it's not just at the point of testing. They are quite involved right from the design stage. Okay. Right from the time you are appointing your contractor to the phase of construction and completion. 
Okay. Even the regulators, they also come in during the construction phase as well. As the construction work is going on, they visit the cyclones in the white to see how the construction so that they don't wait till the building is completed before they confirm if it's good for purpose. Yeah, but so, where's the place of self regulation, especially for a builder or a building um, expert? If, for example, I've contracted you to build a, um, a, a structure, yeah. where does your own self regulation come in? There must be a, a, a reason for you not to curtail or to, you know, bend the rules, yeah. you know? So for me, I wonder where exactly self-regulation comes. Now, in terms of self, self-regulation, like that's why I said that um, we need a more robust and sustainable legislation. Because at the moment, um, the legislation we have does not identify duty orders on the project. Mm. Now, if, unlike the city, I like to draw reference to the UK legislation because I find that very interesting. Okay, and I've been involved on a project with that, on various projects, uh, with the application of such legislation. Okay, so if you are the, the client, you know your duty from day one. And if you are the principal contractor, you know you have self-regulated. You know, apart from being engaged by the contract, I'm not talking about the contract you have with the client now. I'm talking about the law that binds your duty as at the time you are taking up the contract. Because the CDM regulation places a duty on you as a designer, which clearly says that you must take into cognition all foreseeable risks, right from construction, any foreseeable risks that might impact on the project, right from construction to maintenance and even use of the project of, of the and building. And also enclose the health, the health yeah, concerns also including the, the health, workers. Because I said the foreseeable risks that involve all health and safety foreseeable risks. Okay. So not just the safety risks, but the health and safety for safety risks okay. that might impact on the project. Remember, it didn't just say on completion. Hmm. It said all for safety risks that might impact on the project, right from the design to, to construction and even maintenance of the building. That's more like hmm. a project management. The value chain is a, a value time. It's a value, time value chain. In fact, um, I, I, I think we were talking earlier on, and you did mention. Um, a structure that has just been developed and within two years things are already falling apart exactly okay in such a situation somebody should be asking the designer because the law says you must take care of all for civil risk that might impact on the project not even just construction but also during the use and maintenance, maintenance. No, but the designer so, here is it the architect or who exactly is the I designer think, i think i think is the contractor yeah, it, it? It's, it's, it's not actually the contractor. A designer, as defined by such legislation, says if you're a designer, you specify design. Okay. Okay. Even if you give a bill of quantity, okay. Okay. you are also a designer. Okay. okay. And if you also modify any design, you're a designer. You might not, by designation, be a designer. Hmm. But if you are on a project, for example, you're a supervisor on a project, and You've decided to say, oh, we are not going to use so so uh, millimeter of uh, thickness of rod, of bar, bar. of rod. Mm. And you said, oh, let's reduce it to a lesser um, dimension. Mm -hmm. You've taken up the role of a designer in that instance. Mm. So it doesn't, a designer does not mean it's only when you have the designation of a designer. Once you specify design or you modify, mm or you give instruction for someone to modify, then you've taken up that, that role. automatically co yeah, qualifies that, you as yeah, that. As, as, as but engineer... But it doesn't qualify as that. You've taken up the you've role. You've taken up the role. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the qualification of that. Okay. But mm -hmm. I, if you... A designer is someone who has the right um, experience, training, um, to take up such role. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, at the moment, we have... Um, the role is often taken care of by the architect. Okay. Okay. But it goes beyond conceptual design or being... An architect, okay. you also need to have health and safety legislation. In fact, that's why um, I've been advocating that all architects should have robust health and safety experience. Fantastic. Because if you, for every project I've been involved in, once I seek with the architect, architect, I ask you, you need to show me that you've taken adequate uh, consideration of the design risks that might have impact on those that will use, maintain, okay, and construct the project. Mm. So they should justify their design. If you're going to put up a project that the window is going to fall off in two years' time, that's a risk on people that walk around the building. That's true. And that might have 
impact on people that work within the vicinity. That's okay. True. So they need to justify that they've done they've do, don't they've actually done due diligence to ensure that what they've constructed is good for purpose. Anyway, Angela Kaldi, follow me. Let me quickly ask you this because we seem to be running out of time. Okay. Uh, what is a proper mixture? Sometimes you drive down this lake axis and you see pillars yeah. that look skinnier than my legs. <laughs> you know? And then you wonder what's roads. What is the millimeter of roads that are appropriate? Of recent, we've had a case of um, one of these estate um, developers which the structure collapsed. As a matter of fact, some of us are scared to even want to patronize properties in this axis. Yeah. What is the standard? How many bags of cement vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, pans of sand, what exactly is it to guarantee the integrity of a and building? And even the question is, the time as the pillars are tiny, yeah. does that make it or does that make it durable? Would that does that mean that the building is going to last? Okay, they, forgive they, me because they, if you compare yeah. to structures yeah. in the places mm -hmm. like Benin Republic yeah. in Cotonou, yeah. the site of a structure yeah. seems like yes. I'm you here know, to stay I'm here. for a long yeah. for an eternity. When, when, when you are seeing a lot of artisans <laughs> working in Nigeria, you are scared. <laughs> Yeah, okay, uh, let's let's relate it to our conventional motor that you use for pounding yarn. Okay. Okay. Because it's it's thicker and bigger does not mean actually mean a smaller one is cannot be sustainable, will not okay. do the same work. Okay. So I'm I'm not um I won't specify to say this is the minimum of rod that is that is that might be adequate okay. for such. Because it's thinner does not mean it might not be able to sustain the building. Okay. 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 It depends on it is left for the designer, whoever has designed to justify to us that this is can actually do the work. It can okay. carry the weight of the building, the building over the the It means it's of made the, building. the specification. Mm. Okay. So it's it's not it's not but whatever specification you've put in place, a designer should be able to justify to us. Okay. Okay. That it's suitable and sufficient. But there's it a possibility should. where there are certain compromises in terms of standards. And who, who knows is that? I mean because I mean uh, you know, it's something that a lot of us don't know. I mean, you are a client, yeah. the designer or the builder or the contractor is build, putting up this structure. Yeah. We don't know if he has, you know, s created a situation where substandard materials, not enough cement is being used for a building. Exactly. Who bears, who bears the grunt of all of that? Exactly. Now, you, 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 the, the truth is, if you've taken up a project as a contractor and you've decided to go for substandard materials, you decide to cut corners, okay. then you are liable. Indirectly, you decide to willfully expose people to danger. Hmm. Okay? Now, but how do you then check that? It goes back to from day one. What kind of contractors are you engaging? The client is supposed to do what we call contractor's assessment. You want to look at the safety record of the contractor. You want to look at our previous performance record. But unfortunately, Contractors are uh, doing bidding process. Clients are m most often tailored towards accepting contractors solely on cost. And once you choose a contractor solely on cost, without consideration of safety and their previous performance, that is what you get. Okay. Yeah. So, so, but the duty of the contractor is to also ensure that the job is done to specification, and. The, the building regulators also has a duty to play. They have a duty to also monitor, not to wait till, like I said, till when the building is constructed. Right from day one, why they're on site, why the construction work is going on. They are supposed to visit sites to check that the work's in progress. But they're never enough. The, I mean, they, they, they have, in a population like Lagos, for example, over 20 million people, how many people are you going to check? check that, that does, but, but that doesn't make it right. Other countries, they, they, they actually make sure that they, they have they recruit competent people who can actually inspect um, construction site okay. and make sure that what they are doing is in line with set standard by the... Okay, the anyway, Engineer Kaya, we never have enough time yes, on yes, uh, Morning Ride, but we want to say a big thank you for doing a wonderful job in addressing this um, issue of um, incessant um, rising co and building collapse. Yeah, but you. we are very sure that with individuals like yourself, they will avail um, the country your knowledge so that we can be able yeah. to have less of these occurrences. Thank yeah. you so very much yeah. for joining yeah, us on Morning Ride. Well, thank you, Stephen. Okay, Anula, we should be having what next? Oh.